Uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, football fans around the world. It is the D-O-U-G here for its NFL Week 13 football picks. Can you believe it? We're in Week 13. We're getting near the end of the while, near the end of the stretch. And oh boy, it's looking good, isn't it? Before we get to Week number 13, let's go over Week 12. On Thursday night last week, the Saints defeated the Falcons, 17-13. The Buccaneers shocked the world in getting their third win over in a row over the Lions. Vikings and Packers tie. I'll get back to that. The Jaguars make the Texans hate themselves even more with a win over them. The San Diego Chargers beat the Kansas City Chiefs in what was a must-see game because nobody's defense showed up. North Carolina survives the scale with the Miami Dolphins. The Steelers beat up the Browns. The Rams pretty much killed the Chicago Bears. Ravens show that Geno Smith cannot be a quarterback. The Titans destroyed the Raiders in what was a pretty decent game. Arizona annihilated the Colts. My Dallas Cowboys were able to beat the Giants, too, and we'll get to that game as well in a little bit. We'll also be getting back to this game later on as well. The Patriots defeated the Broncos in overtime. And Monday night, the 49ers defeated the Redskins 27-6. Now, let's go back to those three games I want to talk about. First, the Packers and Vikings. It's 2013! How in the hell do we still have ties in the National Football League? Tell me how! This game... I'm sorry, I cannot believe we had a tie. Vikings, this just proves you've been terrible all year long. The best you now you can hope for seven, eight, and one. You're pathetic. Vikings, but Vikings already eliminated at this point. Green Bay, you needed this one to stay alive with the Lions and Bears, and you had help. Tampa and Rams did their job, but Green Bay, you choked. Period. You fucking choked, and that's the best way I can put it. Now, rumor has it that Aaron Rodgers may be coming back to play a little early so he can help his team. Yeah, I wouldn't buy the Aaron Rodgers because looking at the playoff standings right now, um, yeah, you'll need help getting in because you're currently sitting in the 10th spot. You would need, if you want to win the division, help Detroit and Chicago start falling on their ass. And then, oh, by the way, if you can't win the NFC North, you're going to have to help Carolina, San Francisco, Arizona, Philly, Chicago. Oh, far. And, oh, by the way, you still got to worry about the Rams who can sneak up behind you. So, yeah, I want to bother. It's done. You may still be alive, but I want to worry about it. Done. I, I don't think Green Bay's going to make it. That's my humble opinion. Sorry, Karen, Travis, but that's just how I feel. Um, and we'll probably be talking more about Green Bay when we get to the uh, th football picks week 13. Next, Cowboys and the Giants. Tony Romo deserves credit for this. He's, he gets hated a lot, and I've been one of his biggest haters during this year because of last season. But... He finally showed up. And a game that mattered for the Cowboys on a drive that pretty much ended the game, he won. And don't get me wrong, when I saw that Cowboys were going to have a shot to win it, I was worried. I was worried that Tony Romo was going to gift wrap the early Thanksgiving gift to the Giants. I was. I ain't going to make no bones about it. But, Tony Romo was able to deliver a last minute drive, a last few minute drive, and win the game for him as the field goal kicker kicked a three point. Got the three-point kick and won 24-21. This pretty much may eliminate the Giants. I'm sure some people are still going to say they still have hope, depending on what happens with the Eagles and Cowboys and what happens in the wild court situation, because Giants could still make it as a 9-7 if they get help. Uh, but I'm sure this loss hurt New York greatly. I know the Giants needed this win to stay alive better, making the NFC East a three-man race. But it's back to a two-team race again. And that's a good thing for Philadelphia because with Dallas and them playing in Week 17, which we'll talk about the playoffs in a little bit, uh, they would probably feel better being down to two teams instead of having to wait with the Giants sneaking up and taking it from them.
So I'm sure Philly fans may not want to admit it. They'll probably be a little glad it's just a two-team race instead of a three-team race. Next, and this is the other game I want to talk about. Denver and New England. Denver, how in God's name do you blow <coughs> a 24-point lead and lose to New England? There was a lot of jokes and memes on Facebook, and I got and the, the one that was my favorite was the Tony Romo and Peyton Manning switch bodies. Because that's what it looked like. Peyton Manning, and, and to be honest, that first half of the Patriots Bungles game was terrible. It sucked. It blew. It's not going to happen. Overtime was better. But damn, can you a little word that there was a shot that almost, almost that over, it was going to be another tie? That would have been embarrassing to the NFL. It would have been embarrassing. Just my opinion, of course. All right. Now let's go to that great playoff standings right now. Number one seed in the NFC is the Seattle Seahawks. Number two is the New Orleans Saints. They play on Monday. That one could decide who gets the one and two seed. Detroit is currently holding the third seed because as they lead the North and they do hold a tie break over Dallas because they did beat Dallas all in the year. And Dallas holds the fourth seed based on head-to-head -head win percentage and the fact Dallas has been dominating their particular uh, <clears throat> conference, the dominating the NFC East because they have not lost an NFC East game. Now, which has been impressive because they're 4-0 in the division. If Dallas beats the Redskins later in the year, which would be around week 16, I believe, and the 5-0 in the division, they pretty much have the division locked up, depending what happens. Because they said this yesterday, if Dallas beats the Redskins and Dallas and Philadelphia ends in a tie, Dallas would win the division due to the division record. The Eagles are 3-2, and two, losing to the... Dallas Cowboys once. I'm trying to remember who's the other division loss because I don't. It was it was the Giants. I thought it was the Giants. So, Philadelphia, Granted, you know, so that Week 17 match with Dallas in Philadelphia looks very interesting. We're going to get back. We're going to be talking about them as well in a little bit. Uh, South Carolina hosts the fifth seed, the Panthers. All they got to do is keep winning. They got it. Arizona has theirs locked up right now. You know, they, they hold the tie break over Arizona based on head-to-head -head win percentage. If Arizona and San Francisco do pretty well and they both have the same record when we get to, ooh, because mm, I believe they do play, yeah, Week 17. If Arizona and 49ers are still tied at that point, Week 17 could decide the sixth seed. Speaking of the sixth seed, uh, right now you got... Arizona, Philly, Chicago, Green Bay, and the Rams on the outside looking in. Now, I did the uh, ESPN uh, playoff machine for this. Hypothetically, and this, uh, Philadelphia would need some help on him. That's why I'm bringing this up because I said we were talking about it. If Arizona, San Francisco, fall, and Philly can get to 10 wins to Week 17, but this can only happen, if, and this goes for Dallas as well, let's say Dallas and Philadelphia both get to week 17, they both have 10 wins, all right? Then there's an extreme possibility, depending on what happens with San Francisco, Arizona, that Dallas and Philadelphia can get in as the six, can back go into the sixth seed, depending on what happens. Because Philadelphia and Dallas do, I believe, hold the tiebreak over Chicago, do hold the higher tiebreakers at the moment over Chicago and Green Bay, at the moment. For, the, uh, for Chicago to get in, they either got to, Win the North, or hope, or get some help for the six seed, because I don't think everyone's going to be able to catch Carolina. Green Bay, same thing. They would need help to win the North, or they're going to need a lot of help to win the six seed. Rams, you control your own destiny at the moment. A little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. Because, yes, you do need Green Bay, Chicago, Philly, Arizona, and San Francisco to fall on their ass. But... You play San Francisco this week and Arizona in week 14. So if you can have those two teams lose, you'd be helping yourself. Unfortunately, after that, you play, the Saint, the, you play New Orleans. So it's going to be interesting because that's going to be the test. And then, of course, week 17, you play Seattle. But at that point, Seattle may have already had the number one seed locked up. Seattle might not give a damn. As far as for the other teams in the NFC who are eliminated, Tampa Bay, Washington, Minnesota, and Atlanta are out. 
Giants will be mathematically eliminated with a loss this week. Granted, because I'm not saying that yet, just because of how the East has been this year, they could still steal it as a nine and seven, but they would need help. A loss will help. Another loss will help them at this point. In the AFC, we have Denver as the number one seed, New England at number two, Indianapolis at number three, and Cincinnati at number four. Kansas City as it still holds a strong point at number five. Most likely will hold that or the first, or whatever the other seed. Sixth seed is Tennessee. Because they hold the tiebreaker pretty much over everybody. Uh, followed by that is Pittsburgh, Baltimore, San Diego, the Jets, and Miami. Oakland, Cleveland, Buffalo, 4-7, and seven, they're pretty much done. Jacksonville, Houston, been eliminated. But Tennessee to get in, all they got to do is win. And honestly enough, they could win the AFC South if the Colts keep falling down. As far as for Pittsburgh, if they want to win the North, they got to get some help. If they want to get the sixth seed, all they got to do is hope Tennessee loses one game, Pittsburgh wins out. Baltimore. The Pittsburgh-Baltimore game on Thanksgiving night could decide every, could decide who gets eliminated. Because whoever loses that will be 5-7 and seven, will most likely be out. The winner of that game improves their standings a little better of getting in. San Diego, Jets, Miami. You need a lot of help to get in. You would definitely need Tennessee to lose. And then whoever loses, whoever wins between Pittsburgh and Baltimore this week... You ain't eating the lose next week. That's pretty much that. Um, so let's get to the picks, shall we? Game number, well, we got three games on Thursday to talk about. Thanksgiving, Turkey Day, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone a little early this year. Uh, you got three games on Thanksgiving. So yay, ain't that great? It's a good thing. Uh, game number one, it is the Green Bay Packers. Traveling to Detroit to take on the Lions. Uh, I'm taking Detroit on this one. Uh, Detroit's been a little better this year. Uh, I'm disappointed with the Packers after tying with the Vikings. It does put somewhat into it. Granted, why, yes, the last three meetings, the Packers have won. But with that being said, the Lions are a little better. Especially on the defensive side of the ball. Now, hopefully for the Lions, for your sake... Okay, defensive, they're equal and equal on offense, but I trust the Lions defense a little better, and I trust the uh, quarterback situation in Detroit better at this moment in time. Uh, Detroit wins this. They pretty much eliminate the Packers from playoff contention at this point. So, Packers, you got to win to keep your hope alive. Lions, you can do yourself in the Bears a favor by winning this week. Up next, the Oakland Raiders travel to the Dallas Cowboys. Which were, uh, by the way, the Lions and Packers game you can watch on Fox. Uh, the Raiders and Cowboys game you can watch on CBS. Uh, the Raiders have not been a good road team this year, only winning one road game. Cowboys have been a great home team this year, 4-1. and one. You know I'm taking my Cowboys on this one. Hopefully they win so I can have a good Thanksgiving. I know Dallas is favored by a lot. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't, I, you know. It's not because I don't trust the Dallas Cowboy abilities, but anything can happen. Uh, so as for the Thursday night game, Ravens take on the Steelers, which you can watch on NBC. Uh, Unagly enough, though, I will say uh, Oakland has won the last two meetings, so keep that in mind. Uh, next, like I said, it's Ravens taking on the Steelers. Uh, now, the Steelers have won the last two meetings, but Ravens did beat them. <clears throat> you know, do 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 do. Twenty twelve. Now, Steelers have been a somewhat of a decent road team, two and four. Ravens have been a good home team, four and one. Loser of this game will most will most mathematically be eliminated from playoff contention. I'm gonna take the Baltimore Ravens on this one, guys. Uh, they showed up against the Jets. I know everyone's like, "Well, Doug, Steelers played well too." Yeah. That was against fucking Cleveland. So I'm going to take the Ravens on this one. Next, the Tennessee Titans travel to Indianapolis to take on the Colts, which, by the way, all these will be shown on Sunday. I'm taking in an upset pick, the Tennessee Titans. Um, Colts have been playing very bad the last few weeks. It's been disturbing how bad they've been playing. You know, maybe they maybe losing their star receiver a few weeks ago did not help them. Um, if Tennessee wins this game, they'll definitely improve their shot at winning the winning their particular conference or division, what have you. 
And the Colts, if they lose this, they could, depending on what happens the rest of the way, could mess the playoffs, which would be weird, since everyone, I believe, had them locked in. Up next, Browns taking on the Jags and taking Cleveland. This is one of those games that's a coin flip. Neither team's really that impressing. So flip a fucking coin. You're, the coin may get it right. Next, North Carolina Panthers take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Tampa Bay's on a three-game win streak. And it's actually better than the Atlanta Falcons, which is fucking hilarious. Which we'll be getting to Atlanta real soon. Uh, I'm taking the Panthers on this one. Yes, the Panthers did survive a scale over Miami, beating Miami, though. This be, what's the old saying? I'd rather be lucky than good. I think Carolina will win this game, and if things go their way on Monday, we could be looking at the changing of the guard, so to speak. Next, Bears versus Vikings. I'm taking Chicago. Just look at the reasons why I picked the Lions over Green Bay. Moving on. Patriots versus the Texans. <laughs> I'm taking the Patriots. Texans are going to get killed. They have not won a game since week two. Week fucking two. Dear God in heaven. Now that I said that I'm taking the Patriots, why should be the fucking Texans decide? Texans win this one in New England decides to choke? Watch that happen. And if it does, fuck you, New England. If that happens, but I don't think it will. Patriots win this one and go to 9 and 3. Next, Cardinals taking on the Eagles. Woo! This is going to be interesting. Uh, now, a few months ago, I would have probably took Philadelphia. But, how things have changed. While, yes, offensively, Philadelphia is the better team, but defensively, they're still one of the worst. When we just saw what Arizona did to Indianapolis. Um. And Arizona's going to be playing the hard touch because so will Philadelphia. But the question is, who do you take? If you're taking Philadelphia, you're taking the offense. But let's remember, Philadelphia's not been a good home team. If you're taking Arizona, you're taking their defense because it's definitely way better than the Eagles. And that reason alone, because I do believe defense wins your championships, I'm taking Arizona to beat Philadelphia. I think it's going to probably be the best 1 o'clock game of the week. So if you get to watch it, which you can watch it on Fox, definitely try to. It's going to probably be the best 1 o'clock game of the week. Because it's one of those weird ones. Uh, Tennessee and Clotel always says they will be the best 1 o'clock game as well. Then we're on to the late games. Oh, we still got one more 1 o'clock game. My bad. Uh, it is the Miami Dolphins taking on the Jets. Loser, this one may kiss the playoff dreams. Goodbye. So long. Farewell. Azita in goodbye. Je Jets. You suck. You can't do anything with Geno Smith. I'm taking Miami. You know I don't trust our ass either. This is one of those, to me, it's a coin flip. Neither one offensively has been that good. Defensively, the Jets have definitely been better. But we've seen the Jets go up and down every fucking week. Hey, this is the first time we lost two games in a row. That's your fucking license, you dumbasses. I'm taking Miami, and I don't trust it. That's one of those I, have, I don't trust. Next, Bills versus the Falcons. I'm taking Buffalo. They're the, 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 it's the Bills. Shit. And what the worst thing is about this, Atlanta, you were favored to make the playoffs after the, when, before the season started. You're 2-9. and nine. You have to be the most disappointing team in the NFL this year. You get my vote for most disappointing. And I feel so sorry for Tony Gonzalez, Tony. Because he came back thinking he could, this would be his last year. He could probably, they could probably finally win. A, he could finally get the Super Bowl ring. That's eluded him his whole career. But at last, he will not. Unless he comes back and he goes to a new team. So, sorry, Tony. I got to take Buffalo. Next. And a Rams taking on the 49ers. 49ers coming off that Monday Night Raven. Rams coming off the slot uh, after killing the fucking Bears. This would be one of the better late games, I believe, because... And it starts at 4.05 on Fox. Um, Greg, I didn't... I wanted to pick your Rams so badly. But I'm taking the 49ers on this one. I, you know, offensively, both teams are about equal at this point just because neither one's been good at the pass. They've been both great at the run. But, with that being said, I trust the Niners' defense a little more. If it wasn't for that, I probably would have took the Rams, but with the Niners' defense being in the top ten, top ten coming in at number six, I got to take the defense on this one. Sorry, Rams. 
Hey, prove me wrong now. You proved me wrong last week against the Bears. Prove me wrong again this week, huh? Next. WKRP Cincinnati Bengals take on the San Diego Chargers. Chargers need this one to stay alive. They did beat the Chief, uh, Chiefs last week, but with that being said, Char Bengals coming off the bye. I'm taking the Bengals, baby, and we're going to party WKRP style, baby. Woo! Bengals, please don't prove me wrong this week. Please show up. Cause I've been, you've been the most supply. You've been the fun team to watch because you've been fun. No one gave you credit. So... Keep it up, Cincinnati. I'm not a fan. I'm not, I don't like Cincinnati. But it knows me. I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan through and through. But it's nice to at least see Cincinnati doing something that does not involve suckness. Since that's all they've been known for. Up next. We matched from a few weeks ago. Deja vu. Uh, Denver takes on Kansas City. I am taking Denver on this one. I think they will bounce back. It's Peyton Manning. I don't think they're going to choke. Like they did against New England. God, I hope not. So, Denver. The Sunday night game, which I pray and hope to God, it gets changed. The Giants at Redskins. And I'm sure the Giants fans and Redskins fans are pretty much doing this to me right now in the video. Or turning it off. Hey, fine. Whatever. I'm sorry. Neither one of these two teams, Giants and Redskins, are, what are they playing for? Pride? Okay. Whoopee do do. It's not a playoff spot. It's not a divisional spot. It's... Pride and who doesn't and who gets a somewhat of a decent draft pick? Whoopee! I don't care about that. So for the love of God, NFL, move one of the games that is late to to that night. Move, I wouldn't say Denver and Kansas City because Denver's already had three Sunday night games. Uh, it's already had two, I believe, two or three. Move Cincinnati and San Diego. Or move Rams or Forty Niners. Or have one of the one o'clock games that's actually fun. Like the Cardinals and Eagles. Move that one. But don't leave it the fucking goddamn Giants and Redskins, please. Which they probably will anyway, so. Monday night. Yeah, if you're a wrestling fan, you already know ratings are going to suck that night. It's the Saints traveling to Seattle. I'm taking the Seahawks in this one. They've been a great home team. It's going to be a great, probably the best Monday night game of the year. Definitely going to be watching that. I'll be DVRing, I'll be DVRing Monday Night Raw, okay? Or probably watching the replay of it or whatever. So I'm not even going to be watching all that night. So, just as a recap, I have Lions, Cowboys, Ravens, Titans, the Browns, the Panthers, the Bears, the Patriots, the Cardinals, the Dolphins, the Bills, those 49ers, the Cincinnati WKRP Bengals, the Broncos, the Giants, and the Seahawks getting a win in week number 13. Yeah! Let me know what you think of my pitch. Do you agree or disagree? And try to see you next time. This is the D.O.U.G. signing out. Woo!